Hello and welcome everyone. Today we're diving into an exciting topic, how to take control of large language models like Llama 3.2 and fine tune them with your own custom data all powered by .NET. Whether you're a developer aiming to supercharge your application with AI or just curious about how these advanced models work, this tutorial has you covered. If you find this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more AI and .NET content, and hit that notification bell so you never miss an update. Now grab a coffee, settle in, let's explore the future of AI together. To get started, make sure your environment is ready to go. First, head over to NVIDIA's website and install the latest CUDA toolkit. This will ensure your system is equipped to handle the computation required. Next, visit the Hugging Face website to download the model from Meta. For this tutorial, we'll be using the Llama 3.2 Instruct with 1 billion parameters. Note that you'll need to request access to download the model. Don't worry, approvals are typically quick, so keep an eye on your email. Once your access is granted, you'll also need a Hugging Face access token. Go to your Hugging Face profile, take note of your username, navigate to the access token section, create a new token with at least read access if you don't already have one. With everything set up, you can now download the model by cloning the repository. Be sure to include your Hugging Face username and access token in the git command for authentication. Let's dive into three examples to understand the process, and then we'll walk through the code step by step. In the first example, we'll focus on loading the model and starting a basic chat to see how it responds right out of the box. In the second example, we'll take things further by training the model with our own custom data. This will allow us to tailor its responses to fit our specific needs. Once that's done, we'll save the trained model for further use. Finally, we'll load the trained model and put it into the test, observing how it performs with newly learned data. Each step builds on the previous one, so by the end, you'll have a complete understanding of the workflow. Let's review the code from the tutorial. In the first example, we're building a simple chat system, similar to what we did in the previous video tutorial when we used the Mistral model. The process begins by initializing the CUDA drivers. Once the model is loaded, you can start chatting with the system and see how it responds. In the second example, we take things further by training the model with some sample data. For this tutorial, we use a fictitious company called Contoso. We start by initializing the environment and loading the model just like before. Then we prepare a data set of questions and answers about Contoso. This data set is what we'll use to train the model. Next, we define our training process. This includes setting up parameters like the number of epochs and the learning rate. Once everything is configured, we start the training. As the model trains, we can monitor the progress in the console because we've set up logging to display the results. After the training is complete, we test the model by asking it a question from the training data and see how it performs. Finally, we save the trained model for further use. In the third example, we demonstrated how to load the trained model and interact with it. This is similar to what we did in the first example, but now the responses are based on the training data we provided in the second example. When the training is complete, the trained model files are automatically saved in the bin directory where the executable resides. To use this model, you will need to navigate to the bin directory, locate the file, and copy it, then paste it into the location where the original model is stored. Once the new model file is in place, you can reference it by its name when loading and testing your custom trained model. If you'd like to learn more about how to load large language models in .NET, I recommend visiting the ML.NET GitHub repository. There, you'll find README files that provide explanation of the objects and methods used for loading and interacting with LLMs in .NET. Additionally, the repository includes a sample directory. This directory contains the source code for the examples we've discussed, demonstrating how these concepts are applied. One final step to ensure the code works is to reference the nightly builds for ML.NET. This is necessary because some of the updates and changes used in the example may not yet be included in the official NuGet package. To do this, open your NuGet package manager and add the link to ML.NET nightly packages. By referencing these nightly builds, you'll have access to the most up-to-date features and fixes, ensuring compatibility with the example code. Before we wrap up, let's briefly explain a couple of terms. An epoch is one complete pass through the training dataset. It's an important part of the training process because the more epochs you run, the better the model can learn from the data. 
the learning rate controls how much the model adjusts its weights with each iteration. It's a balance if the rate is too high, the model may overshoot. If it's too low, training can take a long time. In this tutorial, we produce a number of epochs of 10 so that we could show the process quickly. However, depending on your data set and the complexity of the task, you might need to use many more epochs. Just keep in mind that the training of a single GPU can take a significant amount of time. That's it for this tutorial. You now know how to set up a simple chat system, train a model with custom data, and use the train model for further personalized interaction.